till we begin embroidery. Thank you for coming back and if you're new thank you for stopping by and I would like to ask you to please hit the subscribe button give me a thumb, thumbs up if you like my video and don't forget to hit the notification bell to remind you when I upload a video and also please continue to share my video with your friends and your colleagues and people that may have an interest in what I have to say. I am really thankful to all of my viewers that have subscribed and have viewed my videos it, uh, and have left comments and the comments have been very helpful. I've had questions asked, I've had suggestions made and this is really helping me with knowing what I need to do going forward with my channel. So please continue to leave me comments and let me know how I'm doing and if you have anything that you are interested in me uh, discussing, please let me know because I would be more than happy to do the research and come up with uh, some information to share with my viewers. As the name of the channel states, we to, so to we begin embroidery and what that means is that you and I are learning this journey of embroidery together and as I learn more and more information I'm here trying to share that with you so again continue to give me comments feedback let me know how I'm doing and also suggestions for new uh, videos so today is number three of my series of learning our machine which is the PR 1055 X from Brothers their 10 needle machine the information that I share in this series um, also in, uh, covers the 1050 uh, 10 needle machine which is the the series just before this one that came out there may be some minor differences but not a lot and uh, most of the information that I'm sharing today, matter of fact, all of the information that I'm sharing today actually is in your manual. Uh, because as I mentioned on my last video, my goal is to be more uh, upfront with reading the manual and all of the technology that I have, all of my uh, cameras and, and phones and, and, and machines and what have you, as I mentioned before, I'm horrible about reading manuals. I know I should, but I don't. I guess it's just being lazy. I don't know, or there is so much to learn. I'm one of these people that started off with technology, just opening things up and hitting buttons and figuring out. But now things are becoming more and more complex, and that's not necessarily um, getting the best out of what I have. And I noticed that mostly with our 1055X embroidery machine. This machine is awesome, as I've said. We all know that it can do some wonderful things, that the capacity of what it does is almost unlimited. But if we don't know this, if we don't know how to do it, then we're not getting the full use of our machine and the machines are not inexpensive so it doesn't make sense to have something that has the capability of doing far more than what we're using it for unless this is your niche for your business and you don't plan to expand to anything else but most of us want to take uh, the fullest advantage of the machine so with that being said I thought that maybe sharing some of the basic information about the machine would be helpful especially for those that are new because I do belong to several Facebook groups and I've seen and heard um, people when well, I heard them of course but I've read questions that have been asked about can you do this can you do that and and my machine is doing this and how can I you know help and get the help or whatever and because of that I said okay let me do a basic um, back to the beginning informational piece about how to set up your machine and, and get the most out of it as a beginner and so that's what this series is I've done two so far this is number three and I think I have two more that I'm going to do so I'll have five videos total with this learn your machine series and again it's going to be the basic so today 
my uh, goal is to discuss the, those nine setup pages. When you're setting up your, your machine in the very beginning, you have nine pages that you need to use and go through to properly set up your machine. Now, of course, it comes at a default, and most of the things you won't have to change, or you may decide not to change, but then there are some things that you need to at least know what they're about. So if there is a need to change something or adjust or tweak it or whatever, then you'll at least have some idea. And again, I'm getting my information from the manual and also from the 1055X playbook, which I discussed on the prior video. And I will uh, show that playbook to you again towards the end of the video. So with that being said, let me get started with those nine pages. Okay, so we start our um, process with our machine. Once you turn it on, of course, and it goes through its uh, startup, and of course the arm has to move, and then you go through the screensaver and what have you, then you end up on this page, as you know, and this is like the uh, front page where everything that you need to do uh, can be accessed from this page. And on my last video, I did go through the icons that are here at, on the bottom row and what their uh, purposes are and also the icons down here and what their purposes are. So we will go to the nine pages um, and discuss the icons and their functions. So in order to get to your nine pages for the setup, this icon right here that looks like a, a sheet of paper or a page with lines on it is what, where you uh, click to get to the pages. So I click that and it takes you to page one of nine. So this is page one of nine pages. Now you can go and do whatever you need to do on this page and hit OK and go back to the beginning page, of course, or you can start here and then you advance by going one, two, three, so forth and so on, or you can go back to the original page. So I'm going to go forward page one through nine. And the first thing that I want to talk about will be the six icons at the very top. This particular icon, which uh, is supposed to be depicting a hoop with thread in it, that is the frame that you touch uh, for your different embroidery settings. That is that. And then this one, the second one that looks like an embroidery machine, you touch that uh, icon for general settings. And um, it takes you to page five and you can do some general settings, but we'll go back and talk about that later. So let me go back to page one. The third one um, is a very familiar uh, icon and that represents your Wi-Fi settings and of course hopefully you've, you've set up your Wi-Fi so you can use your mobile uh, checker that you can do for your iPhone or your Android phone where you'll be able to monitor your uh, process or your progress of your embroidery. Also you have the option of um, putting designs into the machine wirelessly. So you do have that option here once you have your Wi-Fi uh, set up to your internet. Then the fourth icon is um, contains the symbol that will revert everything back to factory default. So if you go into any of these different pages and icons and you uh, select certain things and you make changes and everything and for some reason you think maybe you made the wrong changes or you want to change things back to the way they were but you can't remember what it was or anything like that if you hit this particular icon right here it sets it back to factory default so that is your default icon right there number four and number five is an image where um, it 
the current setting of your screen, you can lock it and uh, make a recording of it on USB. And of course, the last one here is my go-to icon, which is your home icon. And if you hit that, it is going to always take you back to this very first page, which is home. And I use this home all the time. Like I said, it's my go-to. If I get some, si some sort of error situation or if I choose a design that I don't like or for some reason there's something that I want to do different, then for me it's easy to just hit home and start all over. If you select a design, say for instance I go into here, I select a design, it comes up, I don't like it, it's too big or it isn't what I thought it was, I can't see it. However, then you can uh, go here and uh, cancel this. And it's going to take you right back to that very uh, first page. So that is my go-to icon that I use all the time. So go back to this page. So now let's, we're in this area right here. Of course, this is your frame display, and basically what that is, is just an icon telling you which frame you have selected. And I have mine set on, um, the arm is set up for it to be used by a 5x7, which you can see here. Also, you can see here, I'm using the A frame. Now, our machines came with two frame, two arms the A arm and the B arm. Your B arm, um, in the book it tells you what you need to use for your B arm. One thing is the scanner and some of the mighty hoops that you use have to be with the B arm and then your jumbo hoop has to be used with the B arm. In the manual it will tell you what arms you need to use for whichever hoop that you have and also there are several other hoops that are available specifically for certain types of hoops that you have there are additional arms that are available for certain types of hoops that you may purchase so if you look in your manual uh, it will tell you what some of the different arms are. Now at the very beginning of your manual, I think it's the first uh, few pages that go through the parts of your machine, which I highly recommend if you have not looked at that, to please look at it so you can familiarize yourself with what the parts of the machines are, what they're named and so forth. So if you have any questions or you need to talk to a tech or your dealer or you have an issue at least you'll know how to explain what part of the machine it is that you have an issue with so look at the that area in your manual so you can identify the parts now as you are looking through that list it tells you what um, some of the accessories are that you can purchase in addition to what came with the machine and also what arms are needed for those particular uh, hoops that you have purchased. So um, let me check just to be clear. You have your table of content which is on page 9 and then on page 11 is where it starts off naming the names of the machine parts. So it tells you what each part is. And then as you go page by page, page 12, 13, and I think it goes all the way, 14, 15, all the way through uh, page 17. So from page 11 through page 17, it goes over all of the parts of the machine as well as the different accessories that may have come with your machine are that are available for you to purchase to add on to your machines and it also tells you the purpose of these different parts and so there are optional accessories there are standard accessories and again as I mentioned 
there are other arms that uh, can be purchased to go with your machine based upon the type of uh, hoops that you have purchased in addition to what has come with your machine. So if you're doing any aftermarket hoops such as your Mighty Hoops and maybe your um, I would think maybe fast frames and maybe hoop techs. Those types of aftermarket frames may need to use different arms. So make sure that when you are making those purchases that you check with your brother dealer uh, to make sure that you do have the appropriate arm. Or either check your manual and if you don't find the information in your manual, I certainly would check with my brother dealer to make sure that you, it will work with your arm. Usually the company that you're purchasing the machine from uh, can tell you if you let them know what machine you're buying, I mean you're using, which you certainly should be doing, then they can let you know if you need a different arms other than your A arm and your B arm. But just wanted to make that, that clear about the arms and as I mentioned, it's always going to tell you what arm that you have on uh, for the particular frame that you have and the size of the frame. The other thing up here is your display um, window. Now I have mine set on a grid and it's a one inch grid with the X in it so I, it identifies the middle. <clears throat> and what I do, the reason I do this is because I'm always using my camera and my tracing uh, uh, icon to trace with everything, every time I hoop. I want to make sure that my design is centered and that it is not going to go extend beyond the parameter necessary to be stitch correctly without the needle hitting my hoop. I've had that happen once or twice and it's the scariest thing because it makes the worst noise and I stop my machine immediately because my biggest fear is that I'm going to break something. I'm going to break my machine and or break my hoop and both of those things are expensive and the machine even being more expensive, I don't want to have to have a repair. So to eliminate that, I take the extra minute or two that it takes to use my camera, to view the area where I have my design, and is it going to stitch where I want it to stitch within the parameter of the hoop, and then I do the tracing to make sure that the needle as it goes around and does the entire design stitching that it is not going to hit my hoop. You may have to come down on size with your design um, or you may have to end up getting a larger hoop and oftentimes it will tell you uh, you need a larger hoop. But there are times, especially when you're using these Mighty Hoops or aftermarket hoops and the machine itself does not actually identify that particular hoop and it's not anything you can do about that. That's just the way most of these machines are set up. They don't recognize the what they call quote unquote aftermarket hoops. So it's not in your machine like your standard brothers and whatever machine you may have. So it's not going to always tell you that your design is going to fit that hoop without hitting the uh, parameters. So that's just my little soap opera on that. Please trace, if you don't do anything else, trace all your designs and make sure you don't hit your hoop. So back to what I was saying, this is the grid that I use. Now you can change it to just the center so you don't have to have the... Um, the grid per se, or you can uh, not even have the cross mark, but just the little uh, marking in here for the center, or you can have the more grid, um, which is three eighths of an inch. So if you want to be that precise with whatever it is that you're doing, then you can set it up that way. 
but I just kind of keep mine on the one inch. I'm pretty comfortable with doing that. So that's an option on that particular area right there. So keep that in mind. When you move down to the center, now it is a little confusing for me because uh, what I have done, I have kept this at default. Now it says that this here you can name your uh, colors. I don't and you also can set your time so I'm not exactly sure how that works if you select time what else is it going to do now they are talking about the time it takes to stitch out your design or whatever but I haven't changed anything so I haven't really used this function but that's what it's for so you can have color I just keep mine at the default of one two three same thing with the one at the bottom it, it's basically the same you can select your uh, branded threads and uh, they don't have every brand in there they have quite a few some of them I've never heard of them some of them I have I use Floriani and Metro EMB mostly uh, I do have some sim thread that I bought initially from Amazon when I first started embroidering using my single needle machine I wasn't that keen on the quality of the thread. The colors are absolutely gorgeous. And it, the, the collection that I bought, I think it's about 80 spools. It's quite a few spools. 60 to 80 spools, I guess, of various colors. Wasn't super expensive. Started off brand new. Didn't know anything at all about embroidery. I think I just bought all of these things because... I read a book that said you needed to have needles and threads and stabilizer and what have you, scissors and so forth. And so I gathered all of those things and most of them I bought off of Amazon and said, okay, yes, I'm ready to start embroider embroidering. Not knowing that it does make a difference as to the quality of your thread and that usually equates to brand, not necessarily. Some people have excellent uh, outcome with the lesser expensive thread. I'm kind of in the middle of the road. I do like Madeira, which is one of the more expensive threads, but I don't necessarily use Madeira. I do have a collection of Madeira thread, but I don't uh, cater to them 100% because I'm content with the Metro B EMB thread that I have their collection. And I also really love the colors of the Floriani and they stitch that thread stitch really well as well. So that's kind of where I stay in. And but anyway, back to this, you can select uh, whatever uh, Madeira Poly, Madeira Rayon. They have Sulky and the uh, Robinson Anton Poly Rayon, Issachar, uh, Gudeman. Uh, Pay Setter Pro, never heard of that one. Iris, Floriani, and Original. Now, Original and Embroidery, I don't know what the difference is. I know Brother has their own um, brand of embroidery thread, but either it's not listed or that's what the embroidery stands for. I'm not sure. But I just kind of keep mine here because that was the default and I don't change it. The uh, last thing on this page talks about the embroidery background color and the thumbnail background color. Now what does that mean? If you select that then you can actually change your background color where your design is. Okay so you say why would I need to do that? I ask the same question. Basically, say for instance you have a beautiful design or maybe you're doing a white uh, freestanding lace design and you want to do your camera and your tracing and all that stuff and get a good look at it, but you have white on white so it's difficult for you to see. If you change the background to a different color or a darker color or something like that, it's going to pop out and you, you can see it. So it's basically just to help you unless you just want to be very colorful and direct and, and, and decorative and you want to change it up you can do that as well. But I keep mine on white so I have not changed it. 
same thing with the thumbnail the only difference is it it just changes the colors down here and the thumbnails are of course as you know when you put your flash drive in and you have various uh, designs on your flash drive and it shows up down here it's just going to show up against a colored background but again I keep mine on white so that choice is up to you but that's the whole purpose of that so that's page one so now let's move on to page two on page two first one is thread trimming on on or off your default is on I suggest you keep it on all on on because it trims your thread it um, gets the jump stitches so keep it there the middle one um, is the same thing about the jump stitches I have not changed this number this is your default number and I have not changed it because I don't know what parameters would be better or worse so I left it at default if you know a little bit more about digitizing and how the thread is going to act and the length and everything then that's up to you to make that that choice as far as changing but I keep it at default and then here it, it our machine is set at DST setting now for the brother machine our 10 needle machines we can use two different formats we can use DST which is the standard for commercial machines most commercial machines use the Tajima T what is it T A J I M A Tajima which is I guess the standard embroidery uh, code machine which is DST setting but we also can use the PES P E S so we can use DST format or the PES Format. So when you're purchasing designs or you're having them digitized or you're doing it yourself, those are the two formats that our 10 needle machine recognizes. Now if you have a design that does not have those two formats, if you have an um, embroidery editing software, oftentimes they will have a feature in them that allows you to convert your format. I use Embrilliance the most and it does. It allows me to convert my format so I don't have a lot of issues with whether or not I have a design that won't work. Now uh, it's mainly a concern with my single needle machine because I usually purchase now that I have a multi needle machine DST formatted and if I'm going to use that particular design that I have selected with my single needle machine then I go ahead and convert it to a PES because brother single needle machines only use PES they do not use DST they use PES so if you have a single needle brother machine your designs need to have the PES format and if you have a editing software where it can convert then you can just take your DST designs or ART or some of the other ones uh, for different brands of machines because almost all the different brands have different formats that they use which I think is interesting but anyway you can convert them to be uh, something that you can use in the brother machines PES for your single needle and DST and PES for your 10 needle. Here is your short stitch delete. I have not bothered that because um, I don't want to I don't want to delete those short stitches being uh, cut. They may it may be able to make it smaller than this 0 .012 which I probably really need to um, investigate a little bit because I know some of my um, fonts that I use if they're really small then the machine does not do the jump uh, stitch cuts and I would really love for them to do that and I don't know if it's possible to make it smaller but I'll check into that this one is your standard tail and you can change that to a long tail I keep mine on standard and basically what that is is the length of the tail of the thread 
that will be in pass through the needle eye when it is when the thread is cut so when your machine needle lifts up to go to the next uh, place to start stitching you don't want the tail to be so short that when it pulls up that your needle becomes unthreaded so you want to make sure that it has enough of a tail so it stays threaded but on the flip side if you have a long tail and maybe if you're doing some type of quilting or thick material or something along that line you need a longer tail but if you have too long of a tail then you're going to have a long piece of thread that is going to maybe get tangled up into the stitching and make that stitching look a little skewed and or either you'll have to stop your machine and cut it because I find myself having to do that here lately and I don't know why because I haven't changed this but that's what this is for now this icon is your basting and I again have this on default and that is the length between each stitch that uh, when you're basting your design uh, some people like to float. I have floated designs more so on my single needle than my um, tin needle because I use Mighty Hoops most of the time. But if you're doing a design or something, a hoop and tiles or something thick that you feel the need to float versus uh, hooping or if your design itself calls for floating because some of them do, then you can base and this is just going to say how long are those stitches in between and then the last one on here is acceleration I keep it on standard there is a high but I keep mine on standard and that's just the speed that it takes for your machine to your stitches to ramp up to its uh, speed that you've set it on so the lowest speed which is stitches per minute or your SPM stitches per minute the lowest one that this machine will go down to is 400 SPMs and the fastest or the highest acceleration is 1000 SPM and so I don't change this because it's as you know it starts off slow 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 then it gets fast and gets to its speed and that's what this is all about so I don't change it I just use the default so now page three we're talking about the needle attribute settings on here again you can change your uh, brand of thread I keep mine on embroidery because I do manual sequences of my colors I don't assign my colors to my um, different thread uh, sequence here I don't do that because I most of the designs that I use have multiple colors way more than 10 often so I'm constantly changing the colors of my thread so it doesn't benefit me to make an assignment of my thread to the numbers so I don't do that but that's what this is for and this is how you can do it also uh, this icon down here that looks like a little anchor you can use that to if you hit that that's going to lock in this particular number one thread to always be that particular color on number one I try to keep my number one thread color white my number two thread color black and then switch out all the rest as I need to however if my design does not call for white or black and that has happened often then I have to switch that that cone out as well so I don't use the anchor but if you're locking in your colors and you don't ever change the location because that's pretty much what it is and that makes it easy for people that um, you may be doing the same design all day over and over day in and day out the same design because that's your niche you're making t-shirts applique t-shirts the cute little ones that I see uh, a lot of people do you're doing hats and you're doing the same types of hat all the time the same basic logo or design or what have you so you know what your thread colors are that you use and you want to make sure that you have all that locked in so when you're actually putting the codes in uh, on the page that you set your design up 
then you know that number one is going to be white, number two is going to be black, number three is going to be green, number four is going to be blue, whatever that setup is, so that makes it easy and quicker for you to go ahead and set everything up. For me, I'm not that lucky because I don't do it. Now here you can use your color or your numbers. Now if you use color, if you have this on color, that means if I hit a color in my color palette, it's going to tell me what that color is. If I change it, it's going to change. Now, that is based upon what your embroidery brand is up here because if you change it to number, as you see, that no the number came up. So that particular thread, say for instance, I have uh, Floriani and I pick a color then I hit the number. Now this number should represent this color for my Floriani thread. So that's what that's about. On your thread itself, all threads that you get, and I have several different kinds, they are assigned a number and that number represents the color. So that's what this is. This particular number represents this color for this particular thread brand and if I change this back to color that's deep scarlet so deep scarlet for Floriana number is 1085 so hopefully that makes sense I don't use that because as I said I keep changing my um, thread all the time so I don't use any of that this icon here is if you're using a needle that is smaller than a 7511 then the, the manual says to use this icon which will stop your machine from doing the automatic threader you cannot auto thread your needle if you're using a needle smaller than 7511 I don't know if it will damage it or it just won't thread. Most likely it just won't thread because maybe the eye is too small for that process to work and so it is recommended that you hit that um, so it doesn't thread. So it says depending, where am I? I am just want to make sure I read exactly what it says for this one it says disable needle threader that's what that icon is it disables the needle threader which you would use when you're using a needle size smaller than 7511 that is in the manual so just keep that in mind and remember that if you are doing some really fine embroidery like or on on a thin material or ganza or something along that line and you're using a very fine needle with a very small eye something smaller than the standard 7511 remember to disable your needle threader okay now we go to page four now page four is um, not something that for me that I change at the top is your background in image display now it has a camera so if you have this on then if you use your camera then it is going to take a picture of the design in your hoop now that's going to stay there unless you come in here and uh, delete it now all of this is grayed out because I don't have anything not using the camera or anything like that but if I am using my camera if I have a design in there and I'm using my camera then I can certainly um, have this on or off and then it's going to stay there that's what I learned and I didn't know how to get rid of it I took my machine in to get my needle uh, threader uh, replaced because I had an issue with it and I asked the tech how do I get rid of this image 
and because I didn't know and I hadn't read my manual and he simply told me to go into page four and under background image display you have it in there and you can just delete it out or you can turn this off and then it will go away it won't go away other than doing that so if you take a picture and you put up another design and you run the camera now it will take a picture of that new but until you run your camera you're going to still have that that background display you won't have the, the design itself but you're going to have that background display up there and to get rid of that you have to either turn it off or do um, your delete now here the scan quality i have my set as standard and you can go fine or standard standard is fine with me that's basically the quality of the scanning picture if you're doing something very intricate and you need to see it uh, up closer and visually better, then you might want to do fine. Down here is um, fabric thickness check. I have it on. I keep it there and really don't pay any attention to it. Don't use it because I'm not really using any thick material. This, I think, would be more something that would have some meaning if you were doing quilts or heavy blankets or thick jackets or something like that, duffel bags, anything that may be thicker than just regular thin fabric, but this detects the thickness of it. So when it's scanning, all of that works together to make sure you're going to get an accurate reading. The next one is attached table. Now you can set it up to have it attached or you can have the tubular frame table, which is a optional uh, apparatus that can be purchased to put onto your hoop um, arm uh, where your bobbin thread goes and you can attach it to that and pull it out and what that does is similar to what the table does it acts as a table or something to hold up something that's heavy if you're doing a jacket or a blanket quilt uh, jeans whatever instead of it pulling down on your hoop and maybe getting your um, design off register, you use this table and pull it out. If you are using a jumbo hoop, you cannot use a jumbo hoop without a table or the tubular table arm. Now I have the table, I don't have the tubular table arm, uh, frame arm, um, basically what is it? It is the tubular frame table. I don't have that. I don't find the need for it yet because I have my table. If you have your table, please keep it. I've seen people advertise wanting to get rid of their table, sell it, whatever. Uh, I don't understand the reasoning for that because you may not ever use it now, but if you're going to keep your machine for a while, you may run across a situation where you're going to want to embroider something that requires you to have that table and then you're going to regret that you don't have it and then that's an expense that you have to spend money to either get the uh, tubular frame table or get another table when you already had it so if it's in your way you don't have the space just wrap it up in some plastic or something slide it under your bed or the couch or something like that and keep your table that's just my little soap opera but i just really hate to see people getting rid of good um, accessory that they may need in the long run. That's why it came with your your machine because when brother put the package together they knew this was something that would be beneficial just like having a cart to put your machine on. You didn't have to get the cart if it didn't come in a package but it certainly is beneficial to have if it's in your package because you got to put it on something. So just another one of my soapbox and then you can set it up with no table. I keep it on Y table even though I don't have my table on all the time but I just keep it there because I don't have to remember to put it on there when I do use my table. Now the uh, last two has to do with the camera and uh, I have my camera view on and I also have this rotation angle line on although this really pertains more to people probably doing quilting or some type of design that does require an angle and you want to make sure that the camera is going to uh, detect that angle correctly so since this is all default I just keep it on default page 5 
I talked about page 5 pretty much in my previous video when I talked about the screensaver but this is basically what that page is about your opening screen so if you don't want to have screensaver anything on there you just wanted to go straight to that first screen where you have your design selections and stuff you can turn this off uh, the next one is the echo mode or your shut up shut off support mode echo mode means it's going to go to sleep at a certain time if you set it up I have mine set up for 60 minutes basically if I don't use my machine in 60 minutes it's gonna go to sleep just same thing that you do with your computer and then the shut off support mode is pretty much the same thing not only will it go to sleep I have mine set up for four hours so if I don't touch this machine and it's on and I don't touch it for four hours it's going to go to echo mode first in an hour and then if I still don't touch it for another three hours for a total of four hours then it's going to basically shut off and I have to turn the machine back on manually to get it to come back up because it's just like your computer it shuts down and then as far as the screensaver I won't go through this because we did that on the last video you can customize your screensaver uh, you can um, change out the pictures that are there and um, as you can see I have my personal pictures here you have customized and you have default I can go back to default which would put it back to the pictures that came with my machine but I'm using my customized uh, screen savers with my personal pictures on there and so I just keep it that way so those are your options and then you also have a time frame so if I don't use my machine with uh, a period of 15 minutes just like a computer it will go into screensaver mode so you can set this up however long you want it and then of course is your screen display brightness I think 6 is the bright, brightest as it will go and that is just this screen here page 6 more brightness and, and sound so the light brightness and the notification brightness is basically the light that's underneath your um, thread bar if you want it to be light or darker then you can set it up number five is the brightest which I have it on and that goes for your notification brightness as well you know if your thread breaks or something run out of thread run out of bobbin whatever then you have that light flashing and to notify you just in case you're off doing something else and um, I have it on the highest same thing with operation volume and notification volume I have it on the highest which is five because I want to make sure that I hear it regardless of what it is I may be doing in case I'm not right here with my machine the next one is your um, measurements you can either have it in inches or you can have it in millimeters I keep mine in inches because I don't want to do the millimeter conversion it's easier for me to say 5x7 five or 4x4 four four or 5x5 five five or 8x9 whatever versus the millimeters this by that 300 by 400 whatever those things are I can't remember that I, I don't choose to remember that because it's easier for me to remember the, the inches so that's what I do and then of course you have your languages uh, for me English but as you can see they have so many different ones this is German so if you look up here everything has changed to German this is French everything has changed to French this is Italian everything has changed to Italian so that's just a sample of if you uh, speak a different language or you're bilingual or anything like that you do have the opportunity to change the language in your machine I think that's pretty cool page 7 talks about how you're going to get your embroidery into your machine for me I have mine uh, set up for USB cable because that's what I use my USB is on I can change that to wirelessly I haven't done anything wirelessly so uh, but I that option is there as I said everything is set up Wi-Fi so you have that option 
and I may try it since I am using PE Design 11. At least I'm trying to learn how to use it. And one of the goals, one of the benefits is that you can do it wirelessly. And who knows, I may move into that realm. But right now I use the USB. As I mentioned, I don't assign my colors. I use the manual color sequence and I have that on. I keep it on because I select the colors every time I do a design. I put the colors onto my machine where I want them located and then I use that particular number based upon that particular color based upon the design and the sequence that that particular color falls in the design itself. I do the manual color sequence so I have it on. If you're not going to do the manual and you're going to make an assignment to your, um, your threads then you can turn it off but I choose to keep it on. The thread sensor, I keep it on because it lets me know when I have a, a when the bobbin is out, when there's a tension issue. So I recommend you keep that on. And then this one is your mouse pointer, and that is if you're using uh, it, your wireless situation, or you have your computer attached, which you know you can do that. Then you might want to change this mouse. That's an option. I don't bother that because I'm not doing any of those. So now we're on page 8. Page 8. This is a very important page. This page tells you or if a potential customer, if you're trying to sell your machine, number one, trip, trip count. So what this does, it tells you how many stitches have you put on this machine since the last time it was serviced? So if you've never had it serviced, like I haven't because I've only had it since February, then these two numbers are going to be the same. But if you have had it serviced, then this is going to tell you that you have put in X amount of stitches since service, but the total is X amount total. It should be more. Same thing with the trip time. It's going to tell you how many hours have you used on this machine since it's been serviced. And then below it, it tells you what is your total hour of usage. That's important, especially uh, lets you know if it's time to have your machine serviced. Because if you look at this and you see you have all these million stitches and so many hours and you've not serviced it, that's not good. Also, if you're trying to sell it, your potential buyer knows exactly when it was serviced and how much has been used since, it's, since it was serviced. And also, how, how, how old is this machine? How many hours? How much usage have you gotten out of this machine? So it helps them make a decision whether or not the asking price is fair. And it helps you make a decision as to whether or not your asking price is fair based upon the life of your machine. So that's pretty much what this page is for. Now we're at page 9, which page 9 just is basically setting up your wireless um, service for the machine. And then you have my wireless LAN is enabled, that's on. Uh, my cable company is listed, my internet cable basically then it, you have the wireless LAN setup wizard which I use to set everything up made it real simple and easy you can name your machine if you choose or you can let it stay as it is I name my machine to grateful and so that's the name of my machine and that's the name that my wireless service recognize if I do start doing my designs and everything wirelessly uh, it lets you know what the wireless LAN status is just in case you have a power surge or something goes offline or whatever you'll know that it'll be a notification other I don't know what other is and network reset if you need to reset it for whatever reason that's there and then all the way at the bottom is your app guide that you use for your my stitch monitor for your phone and you just either you have an Android or you have an iPhone and you just uh, put your phone up to this and it downloads everything and sets up your uh, monitor so uh, my stitch monitor you're away from your machine you're in another room 
and your embroidery machine is going, then you can look at the status of your design. If there's a thread break or bobbing out or whatever, you get a notification. If your design has moved on to the next step, you get a notification. If um, it has completed, you get a notification. You can just look at that monitor and you can felt, see exactly where in the process of your design is by looking at your monitor. And so this is page nine. Once you're done with all of that, you hit OK. Takes you all the way back to your beginning page. And that is pretty much it as far as your pages one through nine are concerned. Hopefully I have been able to kind of uh, demystify some of those icons and kind of explain exactly what they're for and their usage and the benefit of it. And um, again, that information is in your manual and it is also in the um, playbook, which I will show you in a minute. And so if you have any questions, feel free to put a comment below and I will be more than happy to address that. And as I always have done, I recommend that you do peruse your manual to kind of uh, clarify some of these things. So that is uh, all that I'm going to talk about the machine for today. Next video we'll be discussing the designs and going through these different icons here, what the availabilities are, and pretty much some information about editing. Now that's going to have to cover at least two videos because it's a lot of editing uh, processes that we can do in our machine. Even though we do have editing software, most of us, but if you don't, you can do a lot of different projects without a software just by using what you get with your machine and the editing possibility that you have. Just as a quick um, overview to set it up for the next video, I just want to let you know that our machine, the 1055X, includes a total of 699 designs. It comes with 140 frame patterns, 37 lettering fonts, and 11 monogram font sets. So almost 700 designs, literally, that you get with your machine without having to buy one extra design from anybody. And on top of that, you get the design editing um, capabilities for these particular designs that are included. And don't even start with my design center, which is a totally different animal that opens up an array of things that can be done. So I just wanted to let you know that it is so much, again, as I've stated several times, this machine is awesome and it does quite a bit of things that we may not touch upon um, using the machine for years. So that is everything that I wanted to tell you and to touch on about pages 1 through 9 in the setup component of our machine, our PR1055X and the PR1050. And as I mentioned earlier, all of this information can be found in your manual. And if you have had the opportunity to purchase or thinking about purchasing this booklet, the playbook, it is the Entrepreneur Pro 1055X playbook or you can get the uh, PR1050 playbook, which is less expensive than this one. Uh, they, they don't interchange, so make sure if you're going to get the playbook at all, get the one that is for your particular machine. And again, I'm not advocating that anyone purchase 
either playbook because all of the information basically is in the manual. All of your basic information and also the 1055X playbook is not cheap. I just want to let you know that. So I don't want anybody getting mad at me saying, Shirley told me to go out and get this book and this book costs all this money and I don't have it. It's not in my budget, whatever, whatever. I get that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just letting you know that that is a uh, resource that is available to anyone that's interested in it. I purchased it. I'm glad that I got it because I'm the type of person I like to learn as much as I can about the things that I have to use and especially with my embroidery machine because trying to run a business you need to be able to do things more than just one or two things because you miss out on opportunities. So I felt the more that I know the better um, marketable the business can be. So that was my decision to get this particular book and as I mentioned it comes with a USB drive that looks like a little credit card and then this little thing flips out this little dangly thing flips out and you can put this into either the machine itself which I don't recommend I recommend you view it on your computer because there are live videos with people that are actually doing something and saying something the videos that are on the machine in my opinion are animated and I, I really don't like looking at them because they're not that helpful to me but this I love I think it's like 33 36 different projects and they're projects they're showing you how to make something how to use your machine to produce a project and it, and what is being said is that you if you go through the booklet and if you complete each project you will have touched every available icon on your machine and will learn the function and therefore you will be able to know exactly what the machine can do based upon the functioning of that icon or that feature now I'm going to tell you it still doesn't mean that you're going to be able to do it easily because looking at someone doing it is very helpful hearing them tell you about it is extremely helpful reading about how to do it again is helpful but then you got to do it and you have to practice and you're not going to get it right the first second or maybe third time you have to practice 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 I have tried some projects that were successful first time out the gate tried some projects that was a total failure first time out the gate but you keep trying and trying and eventually you learn how to do it but at least you have something to teach you and you can go back and look at it over and over and over again until you get it see what you miss and then the other thing that I recommend which is free is channels like mine there are so many channels out here that will teach you or show you or give you a demo or give you some type of idea or figure out how to do something that you're trying to do so being new to this beautiful industry this wonderful um, craft I'm so thankful that we have the resources out there for both you and I and I'm also glad that I'm able to be one of those resources I do pre appreciate everyone that views my uh, channel Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for watching my channel. And most of all, thank you for subscribing. So I do ask you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like my video, please give me a thumb up. Please share the videos with those people that you know that may benefit from it. And also, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. If they stop by and look at it, hit the button and subscribe doesn't mean that you have to look at every video that I put out but subscribing is very helpful and also make sure that you hit that notification bell so when I do put up a new video you will be notified and I appreciate that so much and again thank you so much for watching and until we see each other again take care and have a wonderful day